I don't know about you, but the reason I go to conferences is to fangirl over all the incredible things my colleagues are doing in museums and libraries. Like when I saw a session title with Marvel in it, I was like, girl, I'm there. Any chance to see a Marvel costume or the comic books that brought my teenage years to life. But what I learnt in that session made me admire the museum who put on this exhibition even more. Museums are so used to dealing with others in our little part of the world, and we're quite familiar dealing with other galleries, libraries, and museums. But to work with a huge commercial giant like Marvel to put together an exhibition? That's so next level. <laughs> Building connections outside of our industry is always a great thing to do. I applaud the Queensland Art Gallery for putting on an exhibition with them. And then there was the exhibition Inside Out. Now, if you live in Melbourne, you probably saw some coverage earlier this year of Melbourne Museum's No Label exhibition called Inside Out. The public had very conflicting views on this exhibition. But what I loved is that the curators talking about it at the museum's galleries conference owned that fact. Their presentation was a combination of lessons ranging from, oh God, never, to, but totally do this instead, which I found really relatable. The scope they were given for Inside Out was to create something out of the ordinary, which they did. But it wasn't what a lot of people were expecting. The fact that it was in the touring hall, where the museum places a lot of its blockbuster exhibitions, or the fact that there were no labels at all, or the fact that they had to follow a linear storyline and couldn't meander around the exhibition as most people are probably used to doing in a museum. All of the above could have contributed to the mixed bag of reviews. But the curators, Rebecca and Zoe, owned this, all of it. And that I find really inspiring. To learn from people who not only celebrate their successes, but share their mixed bag of reviews, is just, <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> Speaking of leaders, Nina Earl, She's a science curator, and she did a presentation about leadership for women in science. I'd never heard about the Homeward Bound project before the NGA conference, and I can tell you I was definitely intrigued. Now, I've always believed that leadership can come from anywhere within an organisation and from any stage of your career. I'm forever telling library students that you don't always need to look up to find a leader. And apparently, this program helped Nina apply leadership skills to her curatorial practice in museums. But let's hear a bit more about it from Nina. So, uh, some of the skills are some of the resources, I should say, that they introduced to us and we worked with uh, predominantly focused in the leadership field. Um, one was called the Lifestyles Inventory, which is a believe quite an expensive thing to undertake normally but it's actually used very commonly across business so that has been a very very interesting one for me to think about the challenges of where I was sitting mentally and the, mm. what I thought I was presenting and how I was responding to situations and then looking at how my behavior and the actual responses that I verbalize are being interpreted by people for me, the biggest thing for that one has been applying the greater awareness I have now to how I interact in project teams. Um, because as curators, you're sort of, at least in our museum, you lead in conjunction often with a project coordinator. And between the two of you, you have to manage that whole exhibition process from start to finish and you have to ensure and manage the relationships between yourself and other teams to try and get to where you want to get to. As an example at the moment because only what two or three weeks ago it's brought to my attention that I'd said I was going to do something on a project which was organizing videos and I forgot completely. Had nothing in any of my to-do lists, had just dropped right off the radar and I could have talked about 
on all the different projects I'm working on and made up some excuses about why I'd have forgot. But that all wastes time and I was so proud of myself because I was like, you're right. I did say I was going to do that. I remember. I haven't done anything. I'll figure it out and get back to you. And I went off and I figured it out and it took me half a day, all crammed into a time <laughs> when I didn't need half a day. But it was easy and it was done and we got on with it and nothing was lost for me saying that I didn't do something I'd committed to. Hmm. So day two of the conference opened up with, when was the last time you felt uncomfortable in a museum? And I didn't know it at the time, but this theme really set the mood for the rest of my day. I stepped away from my safe space, which is Talking Digital, and went to sessions about building community or sharing and giving back agency to communities and minorities that museums may work with. We heard from Brian from Sick of the Fringe who read a letter, I suppose it was a letter, to those of us at the MGA conference on behalf of somebody who couldn't attend. This letter described the experience of not being able to participate because of a um, disability and the way that the work capability assessment works in London that well, in fact, limits and does more harm than good. I've never been brought to tears before in a conference. I also went to a session uh, run by Barbara and Tahisi. I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly and I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> they talked about a project of theirs and um, the goal of their project was to bring more understanding, connection and essentially life to the Moana Pacific uh, collections at the Auckland Memorial Museum. I know that working with community and knowledge holders creates an enriching experience for everybody involved. I know this and this presentation really really demonstrated just how effective these activities can be. I'm also keen to hear your thoughts on how museums can work with community and knowledge holders more often. In stepping out of my digital comfort zone, I was reminded that as a child, the first time I was impressed with museums was when I heard about Oh, some project, I don't even remember the details anymore, but the, the museum that I always visited as a child, I heard that the, the professionals were coming out of their shining building and working with people in the community to tell stories in a different way about some event that had affected them. And I thought that, and I thought then that that was cool. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, that even though I'm a bit of a data nerd these days, it was nice to be reminded that my first impression of museums started with community. So after stepping out of my comfort zone the day before, I gladly waded back into familiar waters and attended a workshop run by Johnny, Linda and Michael where we discussed our digital maturity. And I must admit, while everyone else was discussing what their museum's digital maturity was, I was just thinking, how can I repurpose this to help people realize what their digital literacy is? <laughs> but what I particularly loved about this session was the sharing. There was no, oh, I'm the expert here, you came to listen to me. No, 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 no. There was none of that. It was collaborative and informative and in how I would love to see sector leaders act. I felt like my voice was considered and that it was valued. There was a theme that came out of the Museums Galleries Conference, which I haven't really talked about in this video, 
which is who is missing from your museum and why. Now I also went to a one day conference after the museum's galleries conference, yeah I know, crazy right, um, called Future Glam and we actually talked a bit more about that theme there. In his talk, Nathan Sentence put a few questions to the audience and I was particularly interested in how people would answer the third question. Because really, even by acknowledging the premise of that question, you are acknowledging that there is a us and them. And uh, actually, this is something I, f I feel quite strongly about. By having an us and them. Well, let me put it this way. Race is essentially the main reason for all of the world's horror stories. It's because of race that we have belittled and destroyed cultures that are different from whatever your own <laughs> is. And it's a construct. A very big construct, I know. And I have no idea how we can break it. But I firmly believe break it we must. Because we are all people with our own stories to tell. We are all people. Now, I've only mentioned my highlights from these two conferences. I haven't even had a chance to get into the other things that piqued my interest, like an electric chair that actually shocks people to, get, to help them empathise with people dealing with chronic pain, and the new reading list that I'm putting together from conference recommendations. <laughs> And then I need to put the Mess Foundation on my list of little museums to go and visit with my five-year-old. I've also mentioned a few projects, exhibitions, that sort of thing, and I've put links to all of them in the doobly-doo, so if you want to do a bit more research, you can find them there. But anyway, um, if you attended the conference or watched vicariously through Twitter, uh, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'm keen to hear them. Thoughts about the conference, that is, not my video. Though you could do that too if you want. I, I'm, yeah, really not fast. 